Tipperary Senior Hurling Manager Liam Cahill. Liam, you knew Dylan for many a long time. You managed him at underage, um, minor, under 21. Your thoughts, your impressions, your memories of Dylan? Yeah, my memories of Dylan, uh, Jonathan, um, I suppose the real standout for me was the under 16 county final in 2014 to Noel Team Kildangan and in Mind Temple 2 under lights, which you know, Kildangan were very, very hot favourites to win that game. And I remember that night he, he led, Dylan led the lines for Clonolty for a, you know, a, against all the odds win. And from that day on, he was really on, on my radar as, as I was minor manager at that time. And, you know, I came into the Tiberi minor squad in 2015. He was on the extended panel because he was still very young. And uh, again in 16, we had him, we went in the minor all Ireland. He came in to the, a big part in the final in Crow Park in the, that year as well. And then, you know, we kicked on to under 21. And obviously, he was a key member of the under 21 team that won the all Ireland in, in 2018. So, yeah, we, we, we campaigned and worked a lot together. And, uh, you know, a marvellous, marvellous man, a marvellous player from an early age. And, you know, it was a privilege to have, have known him and, and have had the, the honour of coaching him and training him. Like yourself as a manager and indeed yourself as a player, Dylan had very high standards. He was very, very focused, very driven, and he knew exactly what and where he wanted to be and wanted to go. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, after the 2015 All-Ireland minor final, we were beaten by Galway and Dylan didn't make the match day 26 uh, that day. And I think that was, a, I know he was still very, very young, but that was a stage where he said to him, himself, look, uh, this is what has to happen for me to, to kick on in a Tipperary jersey. And I remember having the conversation after that minor All Ireland on, on the way home. And um, yeah, ever after that, you know, particular game, or you know, Dylan continued to strive for excellence, prepare, prepare that little bit better. He was still, as I said, very, very young. So he starts to mature very early, you know. And obviously, I had the opportunity to work with him at senior level. But from what I believe, like you know, last year. Uh, in the senior squad, he was he was a big leader in that dressing room. So, I think the more Dylan was progressing, the, the older he was getting. I think the better he was getting. I suppose from your point of view as as a manager, you know, you're you're coming in now and you're managing a group of players who would have been very close to Dylan. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you how do you manage that? How do you approach that? Like, and you know, maybe use it. I suppose as a driving force behind your team and and, and behind the players uh, as they take the field to play games. Yeah, well, Jonathan, that, that was something, you know, obviously Dylan's passing is something that's still very, very raw in the group, and it's, it's, it's something that we spoke quite a bit about when we assembled initially. Um, you know, as a group of players, you know, we don't, we don't, I suppose, talk about it every day, to be honest, uh, but, you know, the individual players, I suppose, have their own little ways of, of, of calling on Dylan when, when they need him, and, uh, you know, we, we uh, we know he's there, and we know that um, that we can we can call on him for for support whenever whenever we need. The Dylan Kirk Foundation set up to screen young boys, young girls, young uh, young men, young women, adults for uh, sudden adult death syndrome. Mm -hmm. I'm sure this is something that, as a sports person, as a manager, as somebody who looks after players, that you're conscious of making sure that everybody's health is is number one and anything that can be done to make sure and put people's minds at ease has to be only a, a, a benefit and a, a huge bonus. You know that our game has moved on so much at every grade and every level and you know training I suppose without using the word regimes but training sessions and uh, methods of training have increased dramatically and the demands on, on, on everybody every player no matter what grade you play at has increased you know and I didn't realise, I suppose, Jonathan, the, the, the number of people per annum that, that um, are so unfortunate to, to pass away through, uh, through sudden adult, adult death syndrome uh, until, you know, I see the figures there lately released in, a, in an article um, in relation to Dylan's passing. So, you know, like from a manager's point of view, you know, when you're training a squad of players, 40 players, really rigorously hard and, 
uh, you, you know, you, you, apart from looking after their total well-being, as a manager you need to have that security in your mind as well that you're not doing anything that's going to affect these these players um, through, through something that, that could be avoided. So, um, you know, this foundation, the work it's going to do, the, the I suppose the the way it's going to allow, you know, every club and every parish to assess uh, their players um, is going to give that element of of security and, and save save lives ultimately long term as well. So if we look towards the game itself, Tipperary versus Kilkenny, um, it's a long, long standing tradition, it's a long, long rivalry. Um, you're close to it yourself, obviously up in, in, in Ballangarry. Um, I'm sure you're welcome Kilkenny to FBD Simple Stadium, but um, once the players take the field, uh, the niceties I'm sure will be well and truly over. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's. I think it's a novel pairing to, to, to have, um, you know, to, to launch the foundation. I really do. I think it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it, let's call it as it is. They're two of the big traditions of, of, of our game of hurling in the country. And, uh, you know, as we always say, when Tip and Kilkenny meet, if they're only playing for a packet of crisps, they want, they want to win it. So um, it'll be good and competitive. And it's coming as well, I suppose, for, for, uh, for both management teams and both squads uh, at, a, at a good time to get you know, game time into players as well uh, that might have got maybe a run out in the early parts of the league. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be competitive and I'm sure it'll be a really, really good game for the crowd that's going to attend. And speaking of crowds and attendances, there are a number of ways, obviously, to buy your tickets, your non-attendance tickets, etc. I'm sure you'll encourage as many people as possible to get online, get their tickets, do what they can to support this great charity and great foundation. Yeah, abs absolutely. Anybody that, that can't attend the game, Jonathan, we'd really appeal to them to, to buy an on attendance ticket for sure. Like it's 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 you know, their support like would be just so um, so instrumental to, to to what this foundation is going to do for, for players of all grades across across the country. And um, I'd really entice the people to go and, and go online and buy a non-attendance ticket if they can't attend the game themselves. But um, you know, also the, I believe there'll be a program, a match program being launched as well. And you know, people I think can go online and buy that as well. And I think there'll be a lot of you know content in that that, that people will will enjoy um, and uh, you know support any way they can. Yes. Yeah, so Liam, you've really set the scene. We're, um, we're looking forward to it already. It's going to be a fantastic day, a fantastic occasion and it will be an absolutely brilliant day out for anybody that can make FBD Simple Stadium on Sunday, February the 19th at 2pm. Liam Cahill, Tipperary Senior Hurling Manager, thank you. Thanks very much, Sean.